Hey, praise the Lord, Brother Clinton here. Welcome to my office once again. Today is the fifth day of the week, the second um, of March, the year of our Lord, 2017, 5777. The title of this video is probably what brought you here, and I'm very glad that you clicked on this video. And I want to say, before I say anything else, that this is a Christian ministry. This video is not intended to slander anybody, to slam anybody's church, or to revile or mock anybody or anybody's religion. This video is designed for the purpose of edifying those who have ears to hear, teaching the Word of God to those people in the churches who desire to hear the Word of God, so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. For in John 4.24 he said, God is a spirit, and they that worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Okay, in spirit according to the power of the Spirit of God, which is in his people, and truth, that which is written in the scripture of truth. And I have in my hand an authorized King James Version of the Holy Bible. For those of us who speak English, this is the Word of God. Other Bibles in English that are worded differently are not the Word of God. They may contain parts of the Word of God, but they're not in their completion, in their entirety, the Word of God. Okay. Having said that, the reasons that Baptists are not Christians. And, you know, I, this has been on my heart before, and I've spoken about this before in, in varying degrees at different times. And and throughout this day today, it, you know, it came out in my speech in an earlier video that I did about 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And it was in my it was in my thoughts here and there today. And then also there was somebody that I just communicated with online who is also a Baptist. He calls himself a free independent Baptist or independent free Baptist or something like that. And, and with all due respect to the people in that religion, I'm not forgetting that on purpose to mock anybody. I just don't remember exactly how it's worded. <clears throat> but it just occurred to me as I've been, you know, in, in an attitude of prayer today and God is doing this particular, a particular work in me today that it must be the will of God for me to speak about this. And so once again, I'm going to say definitively, this video is not to slander anybody. It's not to cause an argument. And the comment forum in this video is not going to be a forum for arguments. Um, if you have an earnest question regarding the scripture or the doctrine of Christ, I will be very happy to help you by showing you the scripture. I'm not going to argue with anybody about the doctrine of Christ because it's not up for debate. Okay. That said, um, if you have a question, I'll be happy to address that. If you just want to argue and contend or revile and mock and call people names, you're going to have to go somewhere else if you want to do that because such will not even be recognized here. That's not what this ministry is for. Having said that, the Baptist religion is a very danger dangerous religion for many reasons. And I'm going to just go over a few of them right here briefly, as briefly as I can while still at the same time making my point and explaining from the scripture why I say what I say. If any of you have any questions uh, pertaining to why I say what I say, anything that's not mentioned in this video, you're welcome to ask me and I'll be happy to, to show you in detail from the scripture, rightly divided, why I say what I say. Now, before I get into what I'm going to say, I also need to say one other thing. Not all Baptist churches teach the same thing. Okay, which is another reason why the Baptist Church is not the Church of Jesus Christ, because in the Church of Jesus Christ there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, you see. But in the Baptist churches there are many faiths, because there are many different Baptist churches that teach, churches that teach many different things. So, if I say something in this video that, that I say that most Baptist churches don't believe, and your Baptist Church believes that, then that's entirely possible. And if that's the case, forgive me and please make that known to me so that I can understand better. But what I'm going to speak in this video is by and large what Baptist churches believe and don't believe from those Baptist people that I have spoken to over the last 20 or so years that I've been serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So, here we go. The number one reason that Baptists are not Christians is having to do with the doctrine of the Trinity. Okay, The doctrine of the Trinity leads about 99% of people in the Christian churches off of the narrow path that leadeth unto life and onto the broad path that leadeth unto destruction. In all of this Bible, the Holy Bible, King James Version, for those of us who speak English, there is no such thing as a triune God. There is no Trinity. There is no God the Son. There is no God the Holy Spirit. The Bible doesn't say eternal Son, co-eternal, co-existent, right hand of the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, pre-existent, theophany, any of those religious um, uh, 
um, seminary in terms, theological terms, that's the word I was looking for, theological, any of those theological terms that Catholic and Protestant theologians use to describe their doctrine of the Trinity, three gods or three persons in one God. Okay, that doesn't exist in the Holy Scripture. Right? And I'm not going to have arguments with people about that, as I said, but if you do have questions, I'll be happy to explain. A couple things that I want to make mention of just to avoid the problem of many people asking this in the comments section. You might say, well, Brother Clinton, what about Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three titles. They're three words, uh, or actually four words, that are mentioned together in the same sentence one time in the entirety of the Bible. There is only one place in the entire Bible where the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are found written that way together in one sentence. And it is in a verse of the scripture where the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about his name. Okay, He said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You see, so Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not three persons. They're not names of anybody. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three titles that refer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He's talking about his name. How do we know he's talking about his name? Because in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, the same apostles that were there hearing him saying, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, commanded that the people should repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why did they say that? Because Jesus Christ is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. This is why Jesus said this in Matthew 28, 19. So there's nowhere in the Holy Bible where Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are in the same sentence used to describe any trinity of persons. There is no plurality of persons in the Godhead. Godhead is a singular noun that means the deity. Godhead is a singular noun that refers to God, the Father. God the Father is the only true God. He is the deity. All right, The deity of the Son of God is God the Father because God was in Christ. God was manifest in the flesh. The Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. Okay? The Word wasn't Christ. The Word was God. Okay? The Bible doesn't say the Word was Christ. The Bible says the Word was God, and God was manifest in the flesh. When the Bible says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, it's not, it's not talking about an imaginary Catholic God called God the Son. Okay? God the Son is nobody. God the Son didn't come in the flesh. God the Father came in the flesh. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. There is one God who is a spirit and one Son of God who is a man. Just as the scripture says, there is one God the Father and one Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So there is no trinity, there is no triune God, and those who believe in a trinity separate themselves from the living God and the kingdom of heaven. Because it's written in the scripture, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. You see, And the trinity is a pagan doctrine that was adopted by the Roman Catholic Church and trickled down into all of her Protestant daughters. For those of you who don't know, all Protestant denominations are daughters of the Roman Catholic Church. All Protestant denominations are daughters of the Roman Catholic Church. That's what the word Protestant means. It means a Catholic person who is protesting against his own mother church. That's what the word Protestant means. Okay, if that makes you angry, I really have no apology. That's what the word means. Okay, so if you're a Christian, you're not a Protestant or a Catholic. And if you're a Protestant or a Catholic, you're not a Christian. This is the first reason that I say that Baptists are not Christians. There are some Baptist churches, there may be, I should say, some Baptist churches who don't believe in the Trinity. They believe that God is one and that he was come in the flesh. There may be Baptist churches that believe that. I've never encountered a person who professed to be a Baptist who believed that God is one and that he has come in the flesh. Every Baptist person that I've ever encountered believes that God is a trinity. So that's the main number one reason why Baptists are not Christians. Because if you believe that God is a trinity, you're not a Christian. You can't possibly be a Christian because you can't possibly obey the gospel of Jesus Christ if you believe that God is a trinity. And that brings me to my second point, why Baptists are not Christians. Because Baptists have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, most Baptists have the idea that if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, 
And if you say that prayer with all of your heart and you mean it sincerely, that doing that will cause you to become born again. And that means that you're a Christian. Okay? They believe that saying the sinner's prayer makes you born again. And they believe that being born again makes you a Christian. Okay, Both of those things are error. There's no such thing anywhere in the Bible as saying a sinner's prayer to become a Christian, accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That doctrine doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. The apostles of Jesus Christ never heard of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And they certainly never mentioned it to anybody because they never heard of it. Okay, And being born again doesn't make you a Christian. Being born again makes you able to see the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3. Now there are some of you who are getting really angry with me right now. And the reason that you're getting angry, with all due respect, is because what I'm saying is what the scripture says, and it doesn't agree with the religion that you've clung to all of your life. And you believe that the Baptist religion is Christian. And so when I speak the word of God to you to correct you, it's making you really angry because it's going against what your religion has taught you. It's going against what your pastor has taught you. And your pastor has graduated from seminary, and he speaks Greek and Hebrew, and he's been studying the scripture for decades, and, you're, and you think that he knows more than everybody. Well, with all due respect to your pastor, if he's not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, he doesn't have God. And that's not my opinion. It's written in the scripture, 2 John verse 9. Okay, So there's no such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. At least there's no such thing in the scripture or in the doctrine of Christ. There is such a thing in the world, but it's a vain religious ritual that means nothing. And it has nothing to do with the doctrine of Christ or becoming a Christian. And being born again doesn't make you a Christian. Okay, You can't do anything to get born again. You, you don't get born again by saying a sinner's prayer. You, you can't do anything to get born again, just like you didn't do anything to get conceived in your mother's womb. You see? You, didn't, you weren't out in, in the middle of darkness somewhere and just decided one day, I think I'm going to be conceived. Yeah, I'm going to begin to exist. And I picked those two people right there, that man and that woman. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go be conceived in that woman's womb. And you just strive to you know, enter into that woman's womb and be conceived. That's ridiculous. Even a child knows better than that. So, and, and, and the Bible says, it's, you know, it's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. All right, and Jesus said, no man can come unto me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. All right, you don't just decide to get born again. When you are born again, it's because God has put his seed inside of you and begotten life in you. And it's not a decision that you made. It's a decision that he made. All right, and when you're born again, that doesn't mean that you're a Christian. The Bible doesn't say that you are a Christian if you're born again. Now, if you're a Christian, then you are born again. But you didn't become a Christian by being born again. You, be, you became able to see the kingdom of God when you got born again, you see. And the reason is because you can't enter into something that you cannot see. If, if you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, you have to first be able to see it. Is that not correct? If you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, you have to first be able to see it. And this is why Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You see? So if a man is born again, he can see the kingdom of God. You can't see the kingdom of God unless God puts it in you to see his kingdom. Unless God puts his word in you and brings forth life in you so that you can see his kingdom. And then once you can see his kingdom, that doesn't mean you're a Christian. It means you can see his kingdom. It means you know that the kingdom of God is holy and you desire to live holy. You desire to repent from your evil and not commit sin anymore. And that's a wonderful thing, but that doesn't make you saved. What makes you saved is when after you're born again, you can see the kingdom of God. When you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and obey the command of the apostles to be saved, which is to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is called being born of water and of the Spirit. And this is why Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This is the way of salvation. There is no such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And Baptists will say that there's nothing you can do to be saved this because this is what their theologians tell them. This is what their, their seminarian-trained theologian, religious entertainers that they call pastors teach them. And I know that sounded very sarcastic and I didn't mean it to be, but it's the truth. Okay? The men in your congregations who called who, who who call themselves pastors are not called of God. They're graduated from seminaries. 
and the seminaries have trained them to think wrong, talk wrong, and act wrong, and to teach you guys nonsense. And they take verses out of the scripture that don't apply to them, and they try to make it apply. And that's something I'm going to talk about in a minute, so I'm going to digress for now. But the first doctrine, the first thing that separates Baptists from the Church of Jesus Christ is the doctrine of the Trinity. The second thing that separates Baptists from the doctrine of Jesus Christ is the way of salvation. Because Baptists believe that you're saved by saying a prayer and that you can't do anything to be saved. Okay? And the Bible says that faith without works is dead and that baptism is for the remission of sins and that it saves you. All right? I know you don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. The Bible says that baptism is for the remission of sins and that it saves you. All right? Now, the third doctrine that separates the Baptist church from the church of Jesus Christ is the doctrine of baptisms. Okay? The doctrine of baptisms is listed in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 2, and it is one of the principles of the doctrine of Christ. And it's written all throughout the scripture, from Genesis to Revelation. And the doctrine of baptisms basically teaches that God has always used water and spirit to save his people, and that baptism is for the remission of sins, and that it saves you, just as I just said. Okay. The Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. It doesn't say, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, as a public profession of your faith. The Bible doesn't say, baptism doesn't save you, it's just an outward showing of an inward change. The Bible doesn't say that. But Baptist people teach that. Baptist people teach that baptism doesn't save you, which is really odd because they're called Baptists, but yet they don't believe what the Bible says about baptism, which is I find it to be really odd. But that's the case when people separate themselves from the kingdom of God and denominate themselves. And why did I say it that way? I say it that way because I want you to recognize what the word denominate means. Denominate means to take a lesser name. To denominate yourself means to take a lesser name, to assign to yourself a lesser name, a name of lesser value. <clears throat> and <clears throat> So when you could be a Christian and be baptized into Jesus Christ and have the name of Jesus Christ, you instead have decided to become a Baptist and get baptized into the Baptist religion, which is vain because the Baptist religion can't save you from the wrath of God and it can't get you into the kingdom of God. You see? So that's the third thing that separates Baptists from Christians is the doctrine of baptisms and the teaching of the Baptist church concerning baptism versus the teaching of the Bible concerning baptism. The Bible says in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, according to God's mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. This is baptism in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 8, there are three that testify in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood. Okay? When you have the Spirit and the water, then you have the blood. It's just that simple, boys and girls. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, nobody in the whole Bible ever baptized anybody by repeating the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They obeyed Jesus Christ and baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And my friends, there's only one way to baptize someone in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And that is to take them in the water and call their, their name, whatever their name is, Bob, Jerry, whatever it is, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and dunk them under the water. That's the only way to baptize someone in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. There is no other way, because the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. See? So that's the third thing. The fourth thing, and I'm going to try to be brief about this, is the doctrine of grace. Okay, When I say the doctrine of grace, those four words are very familiar to people who are theologians. The Bible has a doctrine that is about grace. The Bible teaches about grace, but it's not the same thing as that which is called the doctrine of grace among theologians. The doctrine of grace among theologians is a false doctrine that teaches that without doing anything, a person may be saved. And they believe that salvation is different than what it says in the Bible. They believe that when a person is saved, that means that he's automatically going to inherit the kingdom of God. 
no matter what happens in his life, and that once he is saved, he is always saved and can never become unsaved. And that is a very dangerous heresy that doesn't exist in the Holy Bible. And I'll tell you a couple of ways that they teach this. Number one, they take passages from parts of the scripture that don't apply to them, and they uh, pretend that they do apply to them. <clears throat> For instance, <clears throat> there's a passage in Ephesians in the second chapter, verses 8 and 9. I'm just going to read it for you. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, this is absolutely true. It's the word of God. And it's part of a royal letter that was written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. And you can see that if you read the first verse. Okay, it's not written to theologians who have never obeyed the gospel. What in the world do you mean by that, Brother Clinton? Well, come with me to the book of Acts in the 19th chapter, and I want to read seven verses for you. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through, Paul is the same one who wrote the letter to the Ephesians that we were just reading, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Paul wrote that letter. And now earlier than that, before Paul wrote that letter, it says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He didn't say, Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Why didn't he say that? Because he never heard of that. He said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. And they were, of course, talking about John the Baptist. And then Paul understood what was going on. I'm not going to go into a long sermon about this. I'm just going to keep it short. And, and it says in verse 4, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, They weren't baptized unto the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They were baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. This was the beginning of the church at Ephesus. Okay, this is Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, the same one who wrote the epistle to the Ephesians, when he first encountered disciples at Ephesus. They were disciples because they had seen John the Baptist preach. They had been baptized in the Jordan River unto repentance. They were part of, they were Israel people. They were Jews, part of Israel. And they heard John the Baptist preach, and they were baptized by his baptism. But they hadn't heard yet about Jesus Christ. And so when Paul came across them, he preached to them the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he baptized them in Jesus' name. Why? Well, Peter said that baptism was for the remission of sins. Jesus said that his blood was shed for the remission of sins. You see? Remission of sins. Pardon. Forgiveness. That's when your sins are forgiven, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And so Paul baptized them in Jesus' name, laid his hands upon them, and they received the Holy Ghost. That's how they became Christians. And then, later on, after he had left, after some time, he wrote this letter to them, which is called Ephesians. And he said to them, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so if you have obeyed that same gospel that Paul preached to them in Acts chapter 19, then this letter is addressed to you. And if you haven't obeyed that same gospel that Paul preached to those people in, in Acts chapter 19, then this letter, although you can read it and learn a lot from it, it's not addressed to you. It's not addressed to you. You see, if you haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ, then you haven't been saved by grace through faith. You haven't been saved from anything. You can be if you'll obey the gospel of Christ, but you haven't been saved yet. And that's how the, one of the ways how these theologians deceive people, because they invite you into their church meetings. You see, they go to school, they pay for the license, they, 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 they get their paper, and they put it on the wall of this building that they build or that they rent, and they call the building a church. 
and then they invite people to entertain with all the garbage knowledge that they have accumulated in their seminary that Paul the Apostle of Christ called dung. He called it dung. Read the, the, the letter to the Philippians. Okay, Paul counted that as dung. Theology is dung. It is witchcraft. It is useless nonsense that is used for the purpose of perverting the Word of God to cause people to misunderstand the Scripture. That's what theology is, and that's what it's for. I know you're going to say to me, well, theology means the study of God. Yes, the word theology means the study of God. God doesn't tell you to study Him. He tells you to read His Word, believe it, and do it. Be doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. Study what? Study the Scripture, not theology. The Scripture. So, these theologians, they, 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 they create these businesses that they call churches, and they invite people in who don't know the Bible, and they take verses out of letters that are not addressed to you, and they pretend that they are addressed to you, even though you've never obeyed the gospel, and they tell you that you're saved by grace through faith, and then they tell you, don't let anybody tell you that you need to be baptized to be saved, because right here it says that you're saved by grace alone through faith alone. That's what they say to you, even though the word alone isn't in that verse of the scripture. It isn't there, but they add it twice, and, they, and they, they, they give that verse of Scripture to you as if it were addressed to you when it's not. So they have deceived you into thinking that you're a Christian when you have never obeyed the gospel, and they have also deceived you into shunning Christians who come to you and preach the gospel to you. And when Christians come to you and preach the gospel, you tell them, oh no, my pastor said that baptism isn't necessary for salvation, and we're just saved by grace. That's the grace of doctrine. That's the doctrine of grace. The doctrine of grace as taught by theologians. And it's a lie. Because as, it, as it's written in, in Jude, and let me just read that for you. It's in Jude chapter 1 verse 4. It says, For there are certain men crept in um, unawares, pardon me, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, okay, not to this ordination, to this condemnation. These men are not ordained of God. They are condemned of God. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Now this is my fifth and final point Okay, in this video. And I'm sorry that this video is, well, I'm not really sorry that this video is so long, but I, I know that there are a lot of you out there who have a short attention span, and you would, you would love to see a five-minute video to explain all these things. But it takes a little bit more than five minutes to explain this to you, because I love you and I want you to understand from the scripture. This isn't Clinton's point of view. This isn't Clinton's opinion. This is the word of God. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you might say, why are you saying that my pastor turns the grace of God into lasciviousness and denies the Lord Jesus Christ? My pastor preaches straight out of the Bible, and he loves the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's always witnessing to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, here's the thing. The Lord Jesus Christ of the Holy Bible is not the same Jesus Christ that your pastor is preaching if he's a Baptist. He's preaching a Jesus Christ that doesn't exist. A Jesus Christ that is a third of a trinity called God the Son. God the Son is a made-up deity, a pagan deity that was adopted by the Roman Catholic Church and her Protestant daughters, and God the Son does not exist. You see, there is no God the Son. Catholics believe that God the Son came in the flesh. That's why they call Mary the Mother of God, because they believe that the Son of God is a deity apart from God the Father, you see? And they believe that Mary was the mother of a deity. That's what the Trinity doctrine teaches. And I know that Catholics don't believe the same thing as, as Baptists. Excuse me. I know that Baptists don't believe the same thing as Catholics regarding Mary. But they believe the same thing as Catholics regarding the Trinity. You see? But there is no Trinity. And those who believe in a Trinity are denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see? Because they're inventing, they're, they're proclaiming that there are three deities that are all equal to one another, and there are not. There is only one true God, and Jesus Christ testified of that. If you'll read John 17, 3, Jesus said that this is eternal life, that this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Okay? This makes it perfectly clear that Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, is not the only true God. The only true God is the one that Jesus Christ was praying to. 
As he said in another place, I go to my God and your God, my Father and your Father. Now, now you're saying, oh, Brother Clinton, you're denying the deity of Jesus Christ. No, I'm certainly not. Jesus Christ is the Almighty God who has come in the flesh. And the deity of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Father who sent him, who is in him. That's the deity of Jesus Christ. The Father who sent him, which is in him. God was in Christ. That's what the scripture says. That's why the Son of God is called God, and rightly so, because he is. God, the Father, in a human body, walking on the face of the earth. So people that believe in a trinity deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And they turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. And this is my fifth and final point. And why do I say this? Because Baptists are not saved. They don't know who Jesus Christ is. They're not saved because they haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ. They deny the truth of who God is. They deny the truth of what baptism is for, even though they're called Baptists. And so they haven't received remission of their sins. They, they're not under the blood of Jesus Christ. They're not saved by grace through faith. They're not saved from anything. And yet they think that they are. And because of that, they continue to live in sin. And their pastors continue to tell them that we're all sinners. We're all going to sin every day. And all you have to do is just tell God you're sorry every night and ask God to forgive you of your sins and it's all going to be all right. Well, that's a lie. We're not all sinners. The Bible says that all have sinned, but the Bible does not say that all are sinners. Okay? Some people are sinners. Some people are Christians. If you're a Christian, you're not a sinner. And if you're a sinner, you're not a Christian. And so those people who believe the so-called doctrine of grace believe that they are Christians, even though they've never obeyed the gospel and they're not saved. They think that they are saved. And furthermore, they think that they can never lose their salvation. And because of that, they think that whatever they do, they're going to enter into the kingdom of God. You see? And, and, and they'll say to you, well, you know, if a person d lives in sin, then he's not really saved. Well, of course he's not really saved if he's living in sin. But those who are in Jesus Christ don't live in sin. If anybody tells you that you're going to sin every day, and at the same time they tell you that you're a Christian, but yet you're going to sin every day, that's a lie. That's ridiculous. You see? The Bible said, let me just read to you from, from 1 John chapter 3, just for a moment. Let's start in verse 6. Little children, let no man deceive you. Now let's start in verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also, also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. What does that tell you? Does that tell you that you're going to sin every day? That you'll always be a sinner? Well, you will always be a sinner unless you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and get saved from the power of sin so that you can live as a saint. And if you live as a sinner, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what Baptists teach. They teach you that you can live as a sinner, but at the same time, you're really a saint. Well, how are you a saint if you're living in sin? How does that work? Please explain that one to me. You can't. And the reason that they, that they think that and the way that their theologians explain it to them is by taking verses of the Scripture from the epistles of the New Testament, epistles that were written to the churches that don't apply to Baptists because Baptists are not Christians. And they take these verses of the Scripture, like Ephesians 2, 8, for, for by grace are you saved through faith, and they read these verses of the Scripture to these people in the Baptist churches who think that they're Christians, and they think that these verses of the Scripture apply to them, and they don't. And so these people are are solidified in the false doctrine that they're believing so that even when a Christian comes to them and tries to preach them the same gospel that the apostles preached, they reject us and mock us and the evil and the truth is, is evil spoken of on their behalf. Just as Peter said, 2 Peter chapter 2, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You see, the way of truth is evil spoken of by the Baptists because they have turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. You see, the grace of God bringeth salvation unto all men. Here's what the grace of God is. Let me just share this with you and I'll close the video. It's in Titus chapter 3, no, chapter 2, verses 11 and following. It says, 
For the grace of God, here's what the grace of God is all about. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Those two things. You see, Baptists are not redeemed from all iniquity because they haven't obeyed the gospel. And they're not zealous of good works because they're not converted. You see? And Paul says, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. The grace of God doesn't mean that because you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now you're saved and you can never be unsaved. And even if you sin all day, every day, you're still going to inherit the kingdom of God because God loves you and he knows that you're a sinner. That has nothing to do with the grace of God. That has absolutely nothing to do with the grace of God and the word of God. The grace of God teaches us because it has appeared to all men that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that great, for the coming of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a, peop, a, zeal, a, a, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You see, God said, be holy, for I am holy. If you're not holy, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, I've talked to Baptists before that have that ridiculous doctrine, and I've said to them, seriously, do you seriously think that if you were to die, now you say that you're, you're a Baptist, you say that you're a Christian because you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you believe that you're saved, and you believe that you can never lose your salvation. Is that correct? And they say yes. And you, you might say yes to that if you're a Baptist. And I say, okay, do you seriously believe that if you were to die to leave this life while in the act of being in bed naked with a prostitute, that you would inherit the kingdom of God? And you know what Baptists tell me? Yes. They look me straight in the eye and they tell me, yes. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. And if you believe that, and if you seriously believe that, then you deny our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you are worthy of the punishment that will ensue when you descend into the fire of hell and are sealed there forever. Anybody, I don't care how many years you've been studying the Bible, anybody who would answer that question thusly has never known the Lord Jesus Christ and cannot hear God's word. It's just that simple. So I give you this message in love and in the name of Jesus Christ and this is why I say, according to the Holy Bible, that Baptists are not Christians. And again, I say that this video is not intended for the purpose of slandering anybody. It was intended for the purpose of waking people up so that you can see, if, you're, if you've been a Baptist, so that you can see that the Baptist religion has deceived you and so that you can come to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And I am a minister of his word. And I don't say that to exalt myself because I'm nothing. I'm nothing but what God has made me. And even as Paul said that he was called to be an apostle, so I say that I am called to be a teacher and a prophet to the nations, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the churches, to bring the word of God to the churches, so that people can know how to be saved from their sins and serve the living God in spirit and in truth. That's why I'm here. Okay, I don't exalt myself to be that. God made me this, and he put me here to give you these words. If you don't believe that, that's between you and God, and you can just go on your merry way. But if you do believe that, I am here for you, to serve you in the capacity and the ministry that God has given me. Feel free to comment on this video or feel free to send me an email. My email address is always right below in the information box. And I am here for you in the Master's Royal Service. Brother Clint, I'm out.